Hi all and welcome to another tutorial on UnityCookie.com. My name is Gabriel Williams and in this tutorial we'll be taking a quick look at Unity prefabs. So these are something uh, that will be very very useful to you throughout using Unity. Uh, they're a great way to save any complex objects you build, uh, change multiple items at once, uh, and of course spawning items into your game via code. They're something that you can basically build just about anything in Unity, save it, uh, within this, uh, within the project or the scene, uh, I guess we'll see. We'll start uh, showing how to actually create these um, better than explaining. And you can use these to do, like I said, all sorts of great things. Most importantly, though, saving any uh, anything you've already built and keep yourself from going through all the tedious uh, trouble of rebuilding it. Uh, put it in code and uh, change them all at once. So we'll create something uh, pretty simple just to uh, show how this works. In this case, maybe just a light. And let's pretend that this light I had spent uh, hours setting exactly as I want to some exact specifications of how I knew uh, this light absolutely had to look within the renderer. Uh, and we'll just create a I'll just create a plane on the bottom real quick so we can see effects of this. Okay, so we have this light. It's wonderful. It's perfect. We know that's exactly how we want it. Uh, and I don't want to keep creating new ones. You know, I could go game object create other. Or perhaps, you know, of course, I can hit Control D and make a copy, but uh, I know that I might want to change these later on, and I want them to all change at once. So that's, uh, again, right where the prefabs come in. So let's delete this copy. And if I take that point light and just drag it over into the project pane here, it'll automatically create a prefab of that. So you see the little uh, blue box here on its left. And I can rename this if I like, something like maybe point or actually let's say our super special light prefab so we know exactly what that is and I can take that and then drag it right back into the scene or the hierarchy whichever I like to make a copy of it maybe another one put it there or something and of course once I have it in the scene I can use the control D technique to make copies of it and they'll stay a prefab and you know that they're a prefab simply by looking and seeing that they are the this uh, dark blue color versus the regular dark gray. A little, a little bit hard to see, but um, hopefully it's uh, just visible enough. So uh, there we have it, a couple of prefabs. Now with these, let's say I've made this super special light, obviously, and suddenly I realize uh, my entire game plan is wrong. This light has to be uh, a green color or something. Uh, I can go and select the prefab right here in the project, click on the color, of course, and just change it. And there you have it, uh, all of these lights changing exactly at once, or <laughs> just, uh, just at once I mean, change the intensity or anything else, um, let's change these, uh, there we go. So I have a method of changing all of them at once. Um, Many of you are probably already realizing, oh my gosh, if I had uh, known this only before, uh, so much time and trouble could have been saved. So uh, at least from now on, you'll know this, uh, and it only gets better. So um, maybe we then also know that this light here in the center absolutely needs to have uh, all these special settings, but this particular one needs to be much more intense. Uh, so I can maybe drag that slider up. And we notice that now the intensity and its number here have changed. They've become bold. And this is Unity's uh, very handy way of saying that this is no longer part of the prefab, but only this uh, this particular setting here. So now if I go back to the, uh, the project prefab here, and if I change, uh, let's say, the intensity, you'll notice it only actually changes the intensity on the other lights because they haven't had that particular value changed. I can still change the color and the color will change but this particular uh, item here and its properties will no longer change because oops which one did it change here? Ah, There we go this one I changed. Uh, that one will not change since it's in bold there. Um, so this is very handy if you need to change just one particular part uh, of one light, but you know you want to remain uh, still part of the prefab, so you can change it later. Uh, and then, uh, let's say maybe you, uh, well first, uh, perhaps we want to go back to having this one be affected by all the others. 
simply click up here in the prefab uh, tools menu right here, uh, the revert button. And now the bold is gone. It's back to what it was, uh, or to what the prefab is here. And that will change with the rest. So very simple to go back and make it uh, align with the prefab again. Uh, on the other hand, you might want to change, let's say once again, this color to green or some such. And now I realize I just love this green color so much, I really want everything to be green. Um, all of these prefabs, but I don't want to have to recreate all of them, reset them. Uh, simply click the apply button, get another prefab options here. And there we go. All of the prefabs are now using all the settings from this particular one. So um, once again, something might be thinking, oh, if only I had known this. Uh, well, at least um, use it, uh, use it, and use it all you can from now on. Uh, it's such a useful feature, uh, these prefabs, really. Uh, a couple little bits on this still, I guess. If you click on the select button in the inspector over here again, uh, it'll take you to the project prefab, which can be handy if you don't know. Uh, you know, maybe you have a couple different prefabs. Uh, this will make sure you go right to the one that that one is referencing, so it can be very handy. Uh, also, you can break these prefabs if I really want this particular light to be uh, just completely separate, no longer part of this. Probably, uh, probably the simplest way is simply to uh, make something else a child of it. Uh, so let's say I take the plane here and just drag and drop it right onto that uh, light. And it'll say here, losing prefab, are you sure you want to break it? And in this case, we click continue. And now, we'll notice that this super special light prefab is grayed out. So it's no longer a prefab. So if I bring that plane back out, I still have the option of clicking revert. And now it's back to being a prefab. If I know at a later date, uh, oops, you know, I... Uh, I want to bring it back to being a prefab, so you're not completely ruined if you accidentally break that connection. Just be careful if you accidentally drag something on there. Make sure that's the one you want to break, because uh, it can be tricky sometimes to uh, to bring it back. So there we have it. Um, just make sure you don't break the prefabs. Use them at every possible option. Uh, one small problem with these prefabs is currently um, they're hoping to bring it in soon in Unity 3.5. Uh, is that you can't nest the prefabs, as in uh, you maybe have a couple different prefabs you want to drop them one under the other and the other. Uh, can't do that yet, but it's something that should be coming soon and is really, really going to be helpful um, uh, in the future. So uh, hopefully everyone gets lots of good use out of those. Uh, I know once I learned them, it saved me so much time and tedious trouble. Uh, it's definitely one of the best parts of Unity there. And something that a, a lot of other 3D and um, our modeling or other game engine packages also have. So you might already be used to it. So there you have it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And leave any comments as usual if you have them. Thanks.